84 syllables, every one of those. I give you this, 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 that, that, that. I have nothing, nothing is my own. And I surrender myself to you. My inside, my outside, my this, that, and the other. I have nothing, it's you. You work through me, you, you, I love you through your grace. And in this way, um, and Kumbandas, Sri Kumbandas' expressive, direct, and no-nonsense style leads us to this de dedication to the divine of one's all in all. And that's the very heart of, you know, the path of grace. People ask, what is Pushti Mark? It means the path of grace, not where you learn to do a specific thing to get a specific result. When you qualified humbly, and then the grace just flows. So Kumbandas is this uh, a distributor of all these different moods. So one or the other, you will find oh, you really identify, and that will carry you along. So kind of a bit of history. Um, Shri Vallabhacharya Ji, um, 1487, and Kommandas was 10 years old when his guru appeared on the earth, so let's give that 1497. He took the Brahma Sanban Mantra. Well, it's a bit confusing here because it's in both, you know, the Vikram Sammat, the way of looking at the Indian calendar. It was 56 to 57 years difference. So I've mixed them up a bit here, but around about that time of the end of the 15th century. It was 1620 when Raja Man Singh visited Vraj. Uh, it was 1638 when Akbar, the Emperor Akbar, called Kumbandas to Fatipur Sikri. Uh, it was 1566 and 15 to 1580 where some of his poems have actually been written down and given dates. And he's said that he left the earth in 1640. So why don't we then um, just have the pleasure of listening to some of Kumbandasji's poems? We've only chosen four. And I'll read you the meaning first of all. Urupadik. <coughs> so this comes under the section of, I mean, if you look into the book, we've analyzed all these different, um, different moods in which <coughs> he writes. And this mood is called Swarupa Sakti. Swarupa Sakti means deep attachment to the divine for to the Lord, form of the Lord. <clears throat> now I know in <clears throat> different speak, people say the murtis or the deities, but in this culture, that is a swarupa, not a deity, not a form of the Lord, but the Lord himself, always regarded as the Lord himself, Swarupa, his very own form, and Asakti again, that attachment to. Because people come into devotion, devotional paths and enjoy all sorts of devotional activities like, you know, kirtan, dancing, singing, eating prasad. But that needs to go into where it becomes such a well, it becomes your whole swabhav, your whole character and nature and behavior changes into that mood. <clears throat> My eyes cease to blink as I look at him. As my eyes observe his every limb, my mind gets stuck on that place. What can I say? He has stolen my heart whilst demanding yogurt from me. So you've all heard of this pastime when Krishna demands tax from the gopis who are going and well it said they're going out to sell their milk and yogurt but actually they only do that because they want to get to see Krishna <laughs> it's called 
चलो सखी वहाँ जाइयो जहाँ बसे ब्रजराज कम ऑन सखी लेट्स गो वे श्री कृष्ण इज गौर सपेचन हरि मिले एक पंत द्वे काज सो यस वेल प्रिटेन टू गो आउट टू सेल आर आर स्टफ बट एक्चुअली वी ओनली वॉन्ट टू मीट कृष्ण गौर सपेचन हरि मिले एक पंत दो काज वन पाथ टू पर्पज इज वेरी वेल नोन लाइन इन ब्रज एक पंत द्वे काज <laughs> one path two purposes <laughs> what can i say he stolen my heart was demanding yogurt from me and kumbandasji now discusses with the sakis just how they can get to meet him so rupa dekhnen palakar lage nahi
Next beautiful rendering is in this in the section called Prema Parabas, stricken with love. <laughs> I love this one. So this poem is about the evening time when the cows come home. Brindavan has changed form so much. Now you've got all these cars and everything going around. The road from, you know, let's say Iskon Temple to the main road, it used to take four hours to go down there. It was just bare sand. The whole of the Parikrama road was a rough track in the countryside. Sri Yamanaji River, and you go down to the end of the street, the Sri Yamuna River ran right away along the Parikrama Road. And in the evening, in the daytime, Sri Krishna would go out into the fields and the banks of the Sri Yamuna River and graze the cows with his cowherd friends. And then in the evening, which was a great pleasure for the ladies in the house of where Krishna lived because they missed him all day long. And he would come back with the cows and there would be a lot of dust flying up from the cows' hooves. There are many poems that discuss how Krishna loves to be with the cows and he rubs the dust from their feet all over his body. Because he loves them so much, that's why he becomes a cowherd boy. So that's why he's called Gopala, Govinda, the one who looks after the cows. You can imagine, Rasa Khan has described the coming, the returning to home in the evening. It's an e a daily. Well, you could imagine. So many paintings have been pictured of this, haven't they? With Krishna, with the hundreds and thousands of cows behind him and dust rising up. So this uh, poor lady <laughs> saw him. Well, that was the end of that really, wasn't it? She saw him and, and fell in love with him. So he says, Sri Krishna, the upholder of the Sri Giridaj mountain, captivated my heart as he approached. I was sitting at home quite happily, but when I saw him, I forgot all about my veil. So she is a very dignified lady, very humble lady, and she would be sitting correctly with her face modestly covered. But when she saw him, she just forgot all about the rules of society and the rules of her family. just by one glance of his beautiful lotus face. So you can, can you imagine, you know, in those beautiful old buildings with the Jarokan, where it's carved shutters and the ladies sit behind them and many, many poems are written about how they look down and see Sri Krishna and sometimes he throws stones up at them as well. He is an ocean, an ocean of loveliness, Rupa Nidhan. He is the son of Nanda, and he's the supreme appreciator of divine loving mood. He is waiting to feel your heart. Every single being, every single jiva, every single devotee has a different mood of, I mean, it's like if you went to a sari shop and said, I want to buy a sari. I mean, you're going to be there for 10 years. Which color, what kind of cloth, <laughs> what kind of border? And they're all on the floor in front of you, millions and billions of them. But each one of them is unique. So each one of us in our love is unique. And he appreciates this. So the supreme Rasik Anandanandan. Rasik. 
he loves to drink the nectar. For him, your love is nectar. He wants to drink that. We want to drink the nectar of his feet, his charanamrit. We want to hear the nectar of his sound, his vachanamrit. We want to hear the sound of his flute. And he wants to feel from us our unique combination, how we are, where we're from, how we speak, what we do, how we walk. He wants that in his heart to love. He's a supreme appreciator. No one appreciates in that manner how the devotees relate to him and form this relationship. Seeing him, my eyes become patient, impatient for more. And Kumbandas now describes how his every limb is filled with the nectar of love. So it's just that one who says, I was all right until then. I was just sitting happily. Now I don't know who I am, what to do, where to go, how to behave. I need to go after him and be, become his own. Shall you Thank you. 